Alright, we are back with the community campaign and this should be the first recording of the fourth or third, depending on if you count the first episode as a first episode, uh, of the community campaign, which will range from turns uh, 60 to 85. Yes, my maths is very, very good. The first five turns have been taken care of by Mr. Hayes, a fellow Divide and Conquer YouTuber. I'll put a link to his channel in the description, be sure to check him out. And he sent me a bunch of screenshots, which I will show at some point during my uh, my initial reaction when we go to the campaign map. If I take a look at the name of the save file, I have uh, a little bit of reason to, to worry. Nils called it We Are Chillin', Hayes called it We Were Not Chilling, so I'm not really sure what to expect, so let's jump in. <laughs> I love just opening the campaign map and immediately seeing, Liar! We Were Not Chilling! What is this, Dale Boat has units? Dot dot dot. Dale boat has units? Which Dale boat? I'm not seeing a Dale boat. Are they talking the fuck of what? I mean, my first reaction is I'm very, very, very impressed that we have been able to hold on to Erebor, Dale, and Eskaroth. In fact, I'm not seeing any lost territories. I actually see some extra territory <laughs> fucking farmers, which I think is Fenholm, the, the one settlement which has the hobbits in the Anduin Vale. Um, and he did send me a screenshot of a battle at Fenholm, so I assume that's where he uh, he took that. I'll, I'll show some of the screenshots on the screen uh, whenever it kind of fits the um, the commentary. But uh, it seems Lego lost his life, and it seems the Woodland Realm lost their lives alongside with him. Yeah, the Woodland Realm is gone. The first faction has been eliminated. Wow, good job, guys. It actually took us 60 turns as a group effort to eliminate the first faction from Middle-earth, which is absolutely fantastic. Wood Elves Wither, so we took this place as well, right? We didn't we didn't have that yet. It's a very expensive, or a very wealthy settlement, actually. That is very impressive, Mr. Hayes. It's a good thing he did send me some screenshots, otherwise I'd definitely tell him he was cheating, because his results are... I mean, we've seen some crazy plays during the community campaign, but I think so far... Ah, this is the Dale boat. I think... Oh my god! <laughs> I think Hazes has done the best so far. So I guess this is a stark warning to the next player. I hope the next player catches on to that. So I imagine this army marched in and was either kicked back from Erebor or Dale due to a route, but he wasn't able to get 85%, so that's probably why they were able to route to, to Admiral Bondi, who... Is he stuck behind Eskadoth? He is. So how did that boat even get there? It was probably bought by a general as a mercenary unit and then just placed on that tile, because he can't actually move away. Oh lord, that's actually pretty damn bad. Maybe we uh, get our own boat? Is that possible at all? No. Oh. I am sending a, a, a fresh copy of the save file to the next person, so I can mess around it a little bit. I'm allowed to. But that is very impressive, Mr. Hayes. I am very, very, very impressed. We haven't lost any settlements, even though things were looking quite dire. And I guess that also explains the name of the save file. And in fact, we actually got an extra settlement. Three extra settlements, if you count the uh, the Wind and Drum settlements. And Olgulder has also expanded quite a bit. So the Anduin Vale is also down to that last settlement, it seems. Yes, they only hold Roscobel, which the um, Dolgulder are already laying siege to that. So they won't uh, be around for much longer. Dale and Erebor are comparatively still doing quite alright, so that's quite impressive. So we have 18 regions now. And we... Didn't have to eliminate the Woodland Drone, but still it makes sense to get them out of the way. And that definitely clears up this border here, so I assume a lot of troops can now move to the front line where they are desperately more needed. So a very, very, very good job by Hayes. I'm seeing some counterattacks, which is typical, but not nearly as much as we've had to fight before. And this army is looking quite okay. Uh, we got some extra troops. They're going to Wood Elves Wither. Not sure why, perhaps to put down Watchtowers? We got these extra reinforcements, they're going to the fort. I guess that economy is a little bit... No, that economy is quite alright. Okay, interesting. Uh, we still got some extra troops at Gundamad. Fucking Farmers has a okay garrison. No general in sight, though. I guess he lost his life then, because there was a general in this area. So yeah, I think it's just a matter of training more troops, getting them to the front line, and then slowly but surely taking away the lands of Erebor and Dale. Unless, of course, the next person screws it up massively. And that... Really? That person... Oh, Lord. 
is Bluey. So good luck to Bluey. He'll take take care of turns 60 to 65. So yeah, good luck to you, and I hope to catch you all soon. All right, another day, another set of turns, and this time by Mr. Bluey. And I'm quite excited because the save file was called. What is it? What is it? Oh, there it is. We are getting thick. And I personally love to get thick, I'm quite thick myself, so, you know, let's jump in and see what Mr. Bluey has achieved. My, oh my, Gundabad definitely hasn't skipped any uh, Big Max. We are indeed getting quite thick. The Horde is beaten. Oh lord, that is quite promising. A large settlement we just gained, and have yeah, to take a look at the map. Getting thick is the right way to call it. So we got Mount Erectus. <coughs> Apologies, my voice can't even deal with this. We are again chilling. Good. Does the boat still have troops? That's right, yeah. fool. It's an enemy ship. I love how the AI actually answered. Does it still have <laughs> units? That's right, fool. They haven't done anything for five turns. Okay, well, okay, that's good. Uh, anything else? Lego lost his life. That's not new. Dane's ball. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Um, yeah, okay, so it seems that Bluey was able to push back the Men of Dale and the Dwarves of Erebor. The horde is beaten. We claimed another settlement. Uh, so yeah, we're just continuing on there. Nothing too crazy. Let's take a look at the diplomacy screen. Nothing new there. Let's maybe toggle the fog of war. Just to see if anything crazy has happened. I'm just going to take a peek at the map. Bluey also informed me that the barracks event has taken place now, which is something I completely forgot about, but we are in DAC version 4.6, so the barracks event is still a thing. So now we can train our more elite units. It seems we've already started training more units. Can we get anything special? We can get Mountain Guard, I think that's new. We can get the Black Shield units, those are new, yes. So we should definitely get some of those. We're getting more bulk champions, we already have one here. Got a lot of troops here as well. So yeah, if we just send them to the front line, we could actually achieve quite a bit. All right, so boat, tube stack, Wood Elves Wither. All right, all right, all right. Um, anything else that is worth mentioning? I feel like at some point someone is gonna buy like a random settlement, like fucking gobble Tolfless, and I won't even notice it because I won't really take a look at it. So I'm always kind of curious, or maybe something in Gondor because the white kind of blends in with one another. Yeah. I'm actually surprised none of the really crazy, crazy shit. Oh, the ring is in Minas Tirith. Has happened yet. Like, uh, no one has really griefed the campaign yet, which is a good thing. Which is a very good thing. But, oh lord. The horde is beaten, he says, but that is another horde. An <laughs> right on the border there. It's kind of funny how they're all respecting the border, except for Odawaka. But these guys are all like, oh, we can't cross into that land. That's Gundabad land. So we've got the faction ad and a general joining joining hands, going to war. The Goldor is taking down the men of the Winian, though, which is quite good. Rune is also getting quite thick. They are still laying siege to less. They haven't taken it yet. Harwin might lose his life there. Against Mukalku. But so far, so good. Alright, on to the next one. I wish him good luck. He'll definitely need it. And yeah, I'm very curious to see what will happen by turn number 70. Alright, we're back again with the community campaign as we just had the honor of having Matt do our save file, which actually sounds a lot more sexual than I intended it to be. We are still getting thick, according to uh, Matt, so let's see what he has achieved. All right, here we are, and immediately I noticed this settlement has been renamed to You Shall Not Pass, which I, uh, I quite like. Matt did send me one screenshot of a battle that took place against Dale, and I assume that's the reason that this settlement is named the way it is. And, I mean, the result is just, it's absolutely incredible, like... I've been super, super impressed with the quality of play of everyone involved so far, like, absolutely amazing stuff. I thought I was decent at Total War, but you guys pull out victories that I never really thought would be possible in any in any way, so very, very impressed with that. Some other information or highlights that Matt has informed me of. We are now at war with Khazadum, as uh, Matt took <laughs> Erui and renamed it to No Dwarfs Allowed, which I'm sure they will take to heart. Uh, so we got a decent section of units here, I mean, we're running a little bit thin, but we still have wargs, and as long as you have cavalry in Medieval 2 or a mod of Medieval 2, then you're looking quite good. Um, Matt also defended against the dwarves in Erebor, so they still got a few smaller armies here, 
But it seems that the, the faction leader, I think, was marching over, right? He's gone. We have a decent section of units here. We got two fully armed Orc Avengers with weapon upgrade and armor upgrade. We got a nice amount of bulk champions still. Like, um, we got archers here. I think we finally reached the point in culture where we can just train units for days. Yeah, look at that. So that is actually quite a big improvement. Now that Mount Erectus is bringing a lot of units, a lot of uh, money as well. Only 10 turns till we have the next available unit of Orc Avengers, and they're absolute beasts. They shred through Dwarves. 14 attack, AP, which is incredibly high, 10 charge, and 23 defense. They are just very, very, very good. Uh, we, uh, anything else that has happened here? Matt did tell me that we now have access to half trolls. We got a large chunk of units here. More Borg champions, more Borgs. The next player, Kujin, is going to have so much to work with. Ah, yes, he's training some half trolls over here. We can also get some mountain guard. Cool, cool, cool. Bitrom of Vangbot also getting some units there. So we are training a lot of forces. Our economy is looking really healthy. Like, things are just looking incredibly, incredibly good. We get access to more troops, which was a bit of an issue at some point. We were very stretched thin. Uh, but that's really no longer the case. All our fronts have enough troops, and there's more troops being trained, and they can be sent whatever they're needed the most. And our economy is looking incredibly healthy. Anyway, that's it for Matt's turn. So next time we'll be taking a look at what Kujin is able to achieve. Alright, normally it was Kujin's turn today, but unfortunately he couldn't participate. So we uh, organized a replacement for him, and it was none other than Gandalf. Yes, Gandalf himself. Which worries me a little bit, because Gandalf, you know, from a lore perspective, he's not the best friend of the Orcs of Gundabad. So I'm a little bit curious to see what has happened. Okay, things are looking quite good if I just take a peek at the map. We are still quite thick. Is this Dwarven Brothel? Oh no, we are again chilling. What bloody boat? Thranduil got hold. Someone's been very creative with the, <laughs> the renaming, but it does seem like Erebor and Dale have all been, been holding on very nicely. Gandalf did include a message saying that Edward got attacked by a full Dwarven stack on turn 74, so one turn before this one. Um, so apparently he survived that quite fine, and he's currently on his way to clean up the two rebel, uh, sorry, the two, uh, two rebel armies. Which two rebel armies? I'm not seeing any rebel armies. Maybe, uh, there was that rebel army near Dane's Balls, so maybe that's why we got a very large army in Kazadum North, holy crap. I guess he did clean up that army. Oh, that's quite nice, I guess. Not really something urgent, but we have the money and the troops to spare at this point. We are we are chilling, actually. No dwarfs allowed. I still love that very much. I can't wait for whoever takes Casa Doom first. They'll get a, a special shout-out for me. And it seems we're also on the way to, if I'm not mistaken, the final settlement of the Anduin Vale, Captain Kruklurir. Not a big army, but then again, they don't have the largest army either. Faction leader, faction heir. So either way... If we win this battle, or at least kill these two guys, then I'm pretty sure that the faction, the Anduin Vale, is very much gone. So, Mr. Gandalf has done a quite good job, and if I just take a look at our economy, it's... Ah, I can't get over that. We were struggling with money so badly in the beginning, and now... We just, we just don't care. Let's see. So we got a decently large army here with King Hazork, and we are again chilling. That's pretty alright. You shall not pass us in the siege, but... They got three generals here, which is quite all it right. Will be an honor defeating you. And these are pretty trash units. And of course, we have a mountain guard, if I'm not mistaken. I can't check the units. Uh, wait a second. If I do this. Yeah, mountain guard. 1626. Three of those. I think we'll be fine in a defensive siege battle. And we got some nice Orc Avengers there. Any other armies I need to take a peek at? Kazadum North. Yeah, that's that big army. Maybe they should send them to Kazadim South and they can actually take it. Okay. There we go. Get ready for fighting. There's some more reinforcements on the way. But I think we can train units like crazy now, can't we? Let's see. Uh, we need more recruitment possibilities. But once the possibilities are there, we can train a lot of troops. Building some troll cages or beast cages here, which is going to be quite nice. I'm actually surprised we haven't gotten any trolls yet. We have the half trolls, right? But not the actual trolls. Yeah, lots of opportunities. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Three turns and we'll have snow trolls. That'll be for the next the next person. 
Mountain Guard, we got Snow Greeders, Snow Scouts. So lots of nice units coming in. So I'm very much looking forward to the final five turns for this episode at least. And they will be done by Bjorn's Cabin, which uh, hmm, that's an that's an interesting name. And actually, actually I have to scroll up a little bit because I organized a bit of a competition to see who would get the save file next, which was won by Bjorn's Cabin, and it was to write the best Lord of the Rings inspired limerick. I'm going to try my best to read it out, but I'm not very good at limericks. But here we go. There was an old man with a staff, whose fireworks were quite a laugh. He gave a right hook to a fool of a took, whose antics had incurred his wrath. <laughs> On that bombshell, let's see if Bjorn's Cabin can betray his own people and finish off the Anduin Vale. Alright, let's see if Bjorn's cabin was able to achieve his destiny. Uh, I think we're looking good, seeing as the save file is called dead underscore bear. Let's check it out. Alright, I think the fastest way to see is if we take the diplomacy screen. Yeah, they're gone. Furry status purged has been achieved. So, bear's burial. Oh, that is sad times indeed. And we spent all our money as well, but... Okay, our economy has plummeted a little bit. Which, to me, can mean only one thing. That means we've trained a lot of fucking troops. Let's see, we got Count Gundesbad. Okay, that's a new name. <laughs> Some of these names, man. Uh, let's see, Dead Dwarf Dyke. Ooh, that's a nice DDD, I like that. So we have successfully defended... Uh, I don't even remember the original name of this place. Dead Dwarf Dyke. I'm seeing no other armies, and I'm actually seeing a counterattack with Nazkuga. He's going towards uh, Kittigathol, I think it's called. We also got an army besieging Burr Graham, so we're making good progress. And Burr Kaupas, holy shit, we are just steaming our way down. Soon enough, we'll encounter the elves and men of Dorwinian, so that is quite impressive. We're at 21 regions controlled in 80 turns, that is very, very good. Uh, we've won 87 battles, lost 80, uh, 17 battles, so that's also quite good. Let's just do a toggle fog of war, why not? Let's see what's going on in the world. Dol Guldur is friggin' massive, like, holy cow. Uh, Erebor is down to their last two settlements, and they're not gonna hold on to them for very long. Burgram, that means they'll have one left, and we're already moving an army to Kittigan Falls, so... We've already exterminated the Elves of the Woodland Drum, now we've exterminated the Anduin Vale, next up will be the Dwarves of Erebor, Dale ain't gonna lag too far behind, and the Elves and Men of the Owinian are getting their asses royally whooped, by the Easterlings of Rune and the men of Dol Guldur. So as long as the save file doesn't get griefed, which it can always happen, that is part of the game, then, yeah, we are looking very, very good. Soon enough, all these wars in the uh, Eastern lands will be concluded, and then we can focus on our victory conditions, which is to get rid of the Dwarves of khazad which won't be a whole lot of work, seeing as they only hold this settlement, and the Goblins of Moria are doing quite a nice job getting rid of them. Uh, then we just have to push towards the Dwarves of Ered Luin, we do hold a sizable chunk of land. It seems Angmar was suffering quite a bit after they lost the Bitrum of Bangmar, or Litash, uh, so they're not doing all too well. But uh, yeah, Bjorn's Cabin has achieved furry status purged. There we go, it is now official. And that's uh, one way to end off this episode, so I'm very much looking forward to what we'll achieve in the next 25 turns. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the fourth episode.